Welcome everybody to another Unity VR guide. Today we're going to be learning how to climb. We'll learn how to make objects climbable. We'll learn how to extend the XR Direct Interactor to know when it's interacting with a climbable object. We'll learn how to make a climb provider to move our character controllers. And we'll also learn how to apply gravity to our character controller for when we let go. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Every part is modular and can be done independently from all the others. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Opening up this scene and going to part 14, climbing, we will be greeted with this. We have our table as always and a hat that we can grab and interact with. And then we have this ladder that I made. And if we expand it, you'll see that it has a bunch of individual handles that we'll be able to make into grab interactables. And besides that, on our XR origin, you know, we have our usual direct interactors. We have some Bray interactors and yeah, that's about it. All right. And with that, let's make a climbing system. And I think a good place to start with the climbing system is making these handles grabbable. So let's go into here and we are going to open up the prefab to it because I've made these all the same prefab. We're going to add component and we are going to make it an XR grab interactable. And you'll notice it adds a rigid body and we're going to set this to is kinematic because we don't want gravity to apply to this and then have it fall down. Then you'll have all these handlebars falling down to the ground. Down here in the XR grab interactable, we also want to make sure that we're not tracking the position and the rotation because if it is, well, then we're just going to rip this off the ladder and we're going to be holding it in our hands. And the last thing that we want to do is I've added a new tag called climbable. And this is going to signal to our climbing system that, well, this object is in fact climbable. And that is it for making the handlebars grabbable. Now let's make sure we are saving this prefab. We are moving out of it and we should check the other ones just to make sure. Yep. All right. It looks like it's carried over to all the other ones. They're all climbable. They have the XR grab interactable and rigid body set to what we need them to be. Next, we need to extend the functionality of our XR Direct Interactors. And I've actually already written some of that out. So what we do here is we're going to come in, we're going to look up XR Direct Climb Interactor, and it is going to complain there. And that's because I already have this guy on here. So I'm going to remove this guy, the XR Direct Interactor, and then add the XR Direct Climb Interactor. There we go. And you know what? Before we dive into the code here on what I've done, we need to make sure that we have our select entered and select exited functions that we had from our previous direct interactor. So if we looked at the right controller, you'll see that I have the hand complete. This is what hides our hands when we select something. So I just need to reapply that. I'm going to drag this in here. And then you just come back to hand complete and the function was called hide hand on select. And you know, what? I'm going to do that really quick for the right hand too. just the same thing, remove this direct interactor and replace it with our new one. All right. And these are all set. Now it's time for us to dive into this code. And the good news is there's not too much that we have to go over in this script. So starting off, we inherit from the XR Direct Interactor. So this means that this will have all the same functionality as a XR Direct Interactor. Then we have two public static event actions. And what these will be used for are signaling to other scripts and functions within our project that the climb hand is either activated or deactivated. And then it is also taking a string. So it's going to send out a string to those systems and and tell them which controller is the one being activated or deactivated. Then we also have a string that's just going to hold the controller name. In the start function, we make sure that we call the base start function as well as get the controller name and set it. And then things get a little more interesting here. And right here, we start by overriding the base functionality from the XR Direct Interactor for the on select entered. And what this takes is a select enter event arcs. So what this really is saying is it's going to have a bunch of different arguments that we can pick and choose from, and it's just going to provide us that. So we start off by calling the base on select entered functionality. And if we didn't do that, then the hide hand on select that we just replaced wouldn't work. And we come in here and we check the arguments and we're just looking for that tag. Is it climbable? 
And if it is, then we are going to let other systems know that, hey, the climb hand is activated, we're gonna invoke it, and then we're gonna pass you the controller name that just detected this. And for the exit one, well, we don't have to check any of that. We just say, hey, we're exiting right now, and we're letting you know which controller just exited. And that's it. Coming back to the editor, now we have an object that says, hey, I am climbable. We have a direct interactor that is signaling when it encounters a climbable object. Next, we need to have a climb provider. So we're gonna go to the locomotion system and I'm gonna add component and I am going to add a climb provider. And this is a script that I wrote that is gonna start off by taking a character controller because that's how we move our character. And you're gonna find that on the XR origin. I'm gonna move that in here, but it's also referencing velocity right and velocity left. And what that means is it's looking for an input action that is reading the velocity of our controllers. And we don't have that yet. So we are gonna have to go into the Unity input action system. Now to open up the input action system. I'm just going to type an input here and there is the XRI default input actions. And we're going to have to do this for both the left and right hand. So starting off with the left hand, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit the plus sign for actions. We're going to add a new action called velocity. And you know what? Instead of looking for a button type, we need values. We're going to have to have a value and we need a vector three. Because if you remember velocity, it's going to need a value. Well, that's a vector three. And in order to to get that reading, we need to go into the bindings and we have to find the right path. So it's gonna be under XR controller. And this is where things might get a little divergent for people. So we actually have to use the specific controller layout that you are using, as opposed to, you know, just the generalistic XR controllers that we've used in the past. So for myself, I'm using an Oculus. And for some reason, there's two mappings here. The mapping that you wanna look for is, it's going to say Oculus touch left, and it's gonna have device pose, a pointer, and pointer position. If we back out and tried the other one, this top one right here, you're going to notice that it doesn't have any of that. And so you come over here and then you go into left hand because we're looking for the left hand and then you select device pose velocity. And that is going to be it. And if you were going to develop for multiple systems and want to target them, then all you would have to do is also just go in here and keep adding more bindings and keep adding those pathings. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this one here because I'm not gonna do that. And I am quickly going to do the same thing for the right hand. All right, and then we ha I have auto save here, but if you don't have auto save checked, make sure you save it and exit out. And the last thing we need to do is go back to our locomotion system and connect these. So I'm gonna open up this, I'm gonna look for velocity, and this is for the right hand. So there we go. And then I'm gonna come over here and I am going to do velocity again and the left hand. And if you don't see these empty slots, well, just hit this check mark and it'll show up. And that's it. Now it's time for us to go in and look at the code. This is where all the heavy lifting will be done, pun intended. Right here, we start off with two static event actions. Again, we are notifying different systems that might want to know if the climbing is currently active or inactive. We also have a reference to the character controller, which we set up, and the velocities for our right and left hands. Last, we have a right active and left active Boolean. And what this is gonna keep track of is whether or not the left hand or right hand is the active one. Because when we're climbing, we only want to have one hand as the input for how we are climbing. How I've set this up is the most recent hand to be activated and run into a climbable object is going to be the one that we base our movement off of. And I just think that makes sense. Next, we have us subscribing to the climb hand activated and deactivated. And this is going to call our functions for hand activated and deactivated. And on destroy, it's always good. Or I mean, you need to unsubscribe from those things. Otherwise, you get really funky behavior. Never forget that. Next, we have the hand activated and hand deactivated functions. And these are again signaled when the XR direct climb and 
interactor is calling out with the its event and it passes in the controller name. So we check the controller name and we will either set the left or the right as active based on this. And then we also call our own event. And if anyone's listening to the climb active, it will say, hey, the climb is currently active. And then we do the same for the hand deactivated. It gets called again from the XR direct climb interactor. And we need to check two things here. We need to make sure that the current hand is the active hand as well as the correct controller name because we don't want to disable climbing if we are using the left hand as our climbing hand but the right hand lets go of a bar so that prevents that and finally we have our climbing system so down here we have a fixed update and since we are kind of messing with physics you always want to do that in fixed update instead of the regular update just so it's more consistent and we checked if the right or left is currently active if it is then we call our climb function and i'm going to give a shout out to valum as always the champion of vr tutorials uh this is his solution for climbing and i found it to be just one of the easiest ones to follow and work with and so what we do here is first we find out what our velocity is so we check if the left is active if not then you can assume that the right is active because the only time we would call this function is with the right or left is currently active then we come in we read the values for our velocity either our left or the right and we set that and then we come in and we use the controller dot move and this will come in and we want to do it by negative velocity so the idea is if you are pushing down or swinging down on a controller you are lifting your body up so that's why it's negative velocity and then you also want to use the rotation for the character controller otherwise you get a little bit of funky behavior and this kind of negates that and then of course time dot fixed delta time and that is it for climbing. So if we come back to the editor, press the play button, you'll notice that we can actually finally climb this ladder where you can go all the way to the top. But there is one last thing that is kind of wrong. And it's the fact that we don't have gravity. I can let go and now I am floating, which cool, but I need to fall to the ground if we want to have realistic physics. So let's fix that. Coming back to the editor, let's add gravity to our character controller. So the problem with character controllers is they don't automatically add gravity, but luckily for us, I wrote a little script to fix that. So we can type in here, character controller gravity, and let's open it up and see what we have. And this script is very straightforward. We have a reference to our character controller because that's what we will be applying physics to and a bull that is going to keep track whether or not we're climbing. And of course, from the climb provider, if you remember those events, we are using those here. We're subscribing and unsubscribing on destroy. Never forget. And this is just going to set the bull to true or false. And finally, in fixed update, this is where we apply physics. And I use a neat little trick here. What we do is we first check if the character controller is grounded and if it's not currently climbing. So if it's not grounded and it's not climbing, it's going to come in here and it's going to call simple move, which is actually a function inside of the character controller and it automatically applies gravity. So since we don't have to give it anything because it automatically applies gravity, we just give it an empty vector and yeah, that's it. It will actually add gravity because of that. And so if we come back to the editor and press play, you'll see that we can climb to the very top here and then we can let go and I fall all the way down. And with that, we are finished. I think this is actually going to be my last video with this series. It's time for me to change things up and try new things. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see what I come up with. But again, I always appreciate your time. Uh, like the video if you want to help support my channel. Channel, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.